Hi, it's Greg Hughes with another 90 second website builder video tutorial. In this one, I'd like to show you how to use a tool called the photo gallery. Now this is not an extension that you need to install. It's already built into the extra category in the toolbar right over here. It's called photo gallery, of course. And of course, a photo gallery is a tool that, would you, that you would use to display photos or images on your website. So I'm just dragging out a box stretching and dragging onto the canvas and I'm going to double click so we can go inside and look at the photo gallery properties. And of course, it's here where we would add our photos or our images to our gallery. So I'm going to do that first by clicking the add button. And here I have a collection of some images I'm going to load in here, of famous magicians. I'm going to just click on an image and click add. Now you'll notice I'm going to hover over here so you can see the dimensions of these images are actually all very different and there's a purpose in me telling you that but notice that this one is 347 by 450 pixels that I'm adding um, but the next one here is quite a bit different uh, this one is 275 by 375 and then I'm gonna add a uh, Doug Henning who's even uh, got a bigger picture let's add another one here Harry Houdini See, this one's a really big one, 758 by 988. So notice that these are all different. And I'm going to probably pause the video here so you don't have to watch me do all these. Okay, one more, and we've got, there it is. Okay, so I've added about 10 different images here. In this column, you can see the file name. I don't need to do anything with that. The computer or the software is going to deal with that. But the title will matter because that I can use in my display depending on the options that I choose and the behavior that I choose. I'm going to want to be able to read the titles. So I would go through and edit these titles to be a little bit friendlier looking. So we'll do that. And I won't do it with all of them in this particular video, but I'll just do some here so we can see what that's going to look like. Let's put his whole name in there. And then there's Doug, the late Doug Henning, great magician. And uh, you probably know this guy as Harry Houdini, even though that's not his real name. It was Eric Weiss. But I digress. That was some free magician trivia for you. Okay, anyway, we would fill out the titles here and um, so that it would look, look a little bit nicer. So what's going to happen, according to the behavior here, is when we click on our thumbnails, we're going to see um, a different view of each picture in the same browser window. Let's see what that looks like. I'm going to click OK. So here's my thumbnails. And by the way, this object, like anything else, can be stretched around. If I want to show bigger thumbnails or smaller thumbnails on my web page, I can. Let's make a bigger one so we can see them better in this video. Oh, by the way, before we do all that, let me go back in here. I can also decide how many columns and um, how much spacing and padding I want between those. So there's a two column version of it. So since I have 10, that's probably more sensible. But uh, let's go back to three just for the sake of clarity here. So that's what a three column looks like. Now you'll notice, even though the images were all different sizes, remember, that is the original source image was a different size, the photo gallery sort of um, shrunk them down to very similar thumbnail sizes. Not exact, as you can see, because this one's kind of a, a wonky one, but that's just because of the way the original image was being, um, you know, landscape instead of portrait. But as you can see, it does help me organize these images that are all different sizes into thumbnails that are uh, more manageable. Okay, so let's preview it. I'm going to click F5. So let's see what this does. Now, every time I click on a thumbnail, this is what it's going to do. It's going to take me to that actual image and I'm going to look at it in its full original size. So here's the real size of that image. But what it did was it took me to the image itself. Notice it didn't take me to a web page or pop up any kind of a special window. All it did was it took me to the image in the browser that I'm in. Okay, so that's a very, very basic, simple use of the photo gallery when we click on the um, images, it just goes to that image. So let's change that. Let's make this a little bit more, you know, fancy, all right? So instead of opening in the same browser window, we could do that only open in a new browser window. It'll look the same, it just opens up a separate window. But let's jump down here to the pop-up window. This is considerably different. I'm gonna hit F5 so we can preview our work. Now when I click on a thumbnail, it's gonna open it up. It's gonna open up the image again, not a page, but an image. 
but this time it opens up a browser window that accommodates the actual size of that image. As you can see, this image is 540 pixels by 743. And so it opens up a window of that size and shows me the image. And then I would have to close it to go to the next one. And again, this is a smaller image, so it's going to open a smaller browser window. But it knows what to do based on those settings. So again, here's a smaller one yet. If I open up a larger one, like Houdini's, I get a really big browser window. Okay, so that's a little bit nicer as you can see it gets pretty cool but it gets better yet so I've closed the preview and I'm gonna double click and look at our photo gallery properties again let's go down and look at another one here again we can open that in another window that's very similar here's what the jQuery option would look like now every time we use or anytime we use a jQuery object we get some settings to choose from we can choose what kind of a theme we want what in other words the color of that box so let's just pick one here I can also change the font style and the size of the box and whether it's resizable or draggable those are just for jQuery objects and since we're using a jQuery dialog we have all those options so let's just do this really quickly I'm going to click OK we're going to preview our work. Now you'll see since I'm using images that are all different sizes, the jQuery pop-up's probably not the best way to do this. I'll show you why. Because when I click on it, it only gives me one size. I have to live with that size for all of these images. And as you can see, since all of my images are different sizes, that's probably not a great way to display them. However, I can make this resizable and I can make it draggable, but I have to ask myself if I really want my users to have to do that. Now, there might be some cases where you would, but that might be more appropriate when the images are all the same size. But in my case, you can see they're all different. So I don't really want my user to have to do all of this work when they pop it up. So let's look at another option. Let's close the preview window. Let's go back to our design, double click, and let's pick the bottom option. Now here's the most popular, and you'll recognize why. It's just really the coolest one. It's called the Lightbox Gallery. Now when we choose this behavior, we also get four sub options, if you will, four different styles or types of Lightbox. We'll start with Fancy Box, and you'll recognize this. You've seen it in different places on the internet, I'm sure. It's very cool. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to click F5 on my keyboard and preview this. Now when I click on a thumbnail, I get a light box that looks like this. As you can see, the box opened up, and it's just the right size for this particular image. It also gives me my title and a nice little button-looking thing down here, a close box here. And as I hover over the image, you can see this little arrow for navigation so I can click to the next image without having to go back to the thumbnails. I can just click through and again the light box will accommodate the image just right. Here's the big one and then there's a smaller one and I can click through and I can also click back because these navigation arrows appear. Okay, so that's a great way to do it. As you can see, we've come a long way just choosing these different options. Let me close this. Let's go back into the properties. And again, we're in light box as our action. And we looked at fancy box. Let's go to the next one, Galleria. This is very different. And this is just a really cool way to display photos. Okay, I'm going to click F5. This time, instead of seeing the thumbnails, I'm going to see what you might call a slider. And I can slide through my gallery just by clicking these arrows. There's a forward and a back arrow. But I also have this little lineup of thumbnails down here. So I can jump to the first one or to the last one or any image I want or click through. So that's just a really smooth way to show photos on your website using the light box with the Galleria type. Okay, but we still have a couple more to go. Pretty Photo, I think this is my favorite. This is really more common, probably the most popular on the internet, at least right now, of light boxes. And you'll see why. It's got a lot of bells and whistles, but it's pretty nice. I'm gonna click F5. This time when I click a thumbnail, here's my light box. I have a title up here. I've got a title down here. I've got a close box here. I've got navigation on the bottom that's easy to see. I've also got navigation that hovers. And I've also got this little thumbnail slider down here. So this has got just about every fancy gizmo in it you can imagine. So I can click through this way. Or I can click through this way. 
or I can use it down here. So there's a lot of options for the user to get around and I, I just like these little thumbnails so they can jump around or they can go from picture to picture. So that's a really, really great way to do it. There's the close box, easy to see. There's one more option though and it's similar to what we just saw, pretty photo. It's just slimmer, so they call it slim box. Again, it's one of the light box gallery types, but it's just a little bit slimmer. Looks really nice. I'll click F5 so we can preview that one. And as I click on a thumbnail, you can see the light box comes up. Again, it accommodates the size, but instead of having a lot of navigation options, it's just simpler. There is a hover right here for a next, and I can hover for a next. Again, I can also hover for previous. And then down here we get our title and our close box. So it's just a little bit simpler, cleaner, another very common way to display photos or images. And again, you can see the window shrinks or grows to accommodate uh, whatever image it's showing. So that's how you use the light box in photo gallery. It's just a great way to display images or photos. A couple other things now you should know. That's the fun part. Um, you also still have some style settings for your basic layout here. So if you wanted to display the titles below the thumbnails, you could do that by clicking this box. Of course, you can choose a different font if you want, and you can set that font to you know all of the things you would expect. And now you can see the titles appear below the thumbnails. Even when I preview, there they are in the font that I chose and clicking on them brings up my pretty photo or rather my light box. So anyway, as you can see, there's just a lot of fun things to play with. And this one particular tool that's hidden in the extras toolbox over here called Photo Gallery. So use that to display your photos and you'll find you have a lot of different options and a lot of different ways to do that with this tool and 90 Second Website Builder.